want to share with you, yeah, and your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch in our streets, we're touching hearts and changing lives. everyone welcome to uh one touch ministries second our home gathering where our uh episodic uh leader senior leaders is uh pastor shannon and prophetess nadija young and yeah and i'm your campus minister there's a, a, a minister henry jackson so um yeah we're going to start off with, with today order of service and we're going to start with the reading of a uh, scripture. And I read from, I read my interpret in Who Am I? First Chronicle 29, 14 through 20. It reads, But who am I? And what, and what is my people? And we should be able to offer so willingly after this source. For all things come to thee, and thy own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and so journey we were on our father. Our day on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abide. O Lord our God, all the stores that have we have prepared to build thee a house, but thy holy name coming of thy hand, and is all time all thy own. I know also, my, my God, that thou hast tried the heart and hast pleasure in uh, unrighteousness. As for me, in the unrighteousness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people which are present thee to offer willingness unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and of Israel, our Father, keep this forever in the immigration of the thought of the heart of the peoples and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Simon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandment, thy testimony, and thy stature, and to do all these things, or to build the palace of the thing which I have made to prevent it. Uh, thank you as a, uh, so much for that. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, start off. Yeah, we're going to uh, go into prayer now. Thy gracious Father, you come to you as humble as we know how. We want to thank, we're going to thank you for what you have done for us the last week and this week. Father God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a Thanksgiving dinner with my family. Father God, you bless them to make it here safe and sound. We pray for them to make a safe journey back home. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to love and to thank each other for all we have been through this year and the things that we are going through this year. So we just thank you for just giving us the strength and the courage to continue on. We thank you for the angels being with the sick and the shedding all over the world. Lord, we just thank you for being with the, I don't know the name, but anyway, the Tam and Sam family. 
for the loss of their loved ones. Lord, we thank you for standing by them, strengthening them when they are weaker. Build them up when they are torn down and prop them on every leader's side. We know, Father God, that things don't happen the way we want it to be, but sometimes we have to accept what it is and to just continue to stay in touch with you and spread your love here and abroad. We ask in your son Jesus' name, our mother, father, day, Lord. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank God for the kids that come home with all the from the camp. I get that. First, we're going to go into uh, praise and worship. Uh, I want to know who loved my Jesus. I want to know who loved my Lord. I want to know who loved my Jesus. I want to know who loved my Lord. I want to know. Who loves my Jesus? I want to know who loves my Lord. I want to know who loves my Jesus. I want to know who loves my Lord. Amen. 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 I want to sing. The very testimony. I should have been dead and gone, but the Lord, you let me live on. Oh, I am a living testimony, and I thank the Lord I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Oh, I am. A living testimony should have been dead and gone, but the Lord, you let me live on. Oh, I am a living testimony, and I thank the Lord I'm still alive. Thank you, thank you. It's like, yeah, we gonna uh have a testimony part of service. Um, I just want to uh, uh, give my testimony. You know, I thank the Lord for, for waking me up and putting me in my right mind and for uh, giving me, you know, clothes to call myself and food to eat. Um, I thank him for, for giving me a bed to sleep in and and for, for the, you know, I want to say no materialistic things that he given me to, to play with. Um, you know, I do also, you know, thank him for, for the people that's in my life, whether it's friends and family, uh, you know, the ones who I'm close to, the ones I'm not, you know, I ask that the Lord, you no, know, I, I, um, uh, uh, you know, I want to say, you no, know, I want to pray for my, uh, you know, my, uh, enemies or, or people that, you know, still, you know, think about me a certain way. I, I, I like, like to, f- uh, uh. It's like, yeah, forgive them and let them know that I, I hold nothing against them, you know, for hurting me or, you know, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm past that. So, you know, I do want, want them to continue living and growing, you know, in their life. And so then they could, you know, do the things that they wanted to do. Okay, that the song say, I'm a living testimony. Mm-hmm. The thing that I used to do, I don't do no more. The places that I used to go, I don't go no more. Things I used to say, I don't say no more. Cause God had gave me a pure heart and a mind to overcome all of this, all these old things, and made me new, coming into the new things. As the year goes out, and the old year going out, and the new year coming in, and we just thank God for just being among the people that are still here. And we thank you for blessing the family that lost loved ones on the way. Lord, it's different them when they are wicked. Father God, we just thank you for being in the midst of us daily. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Yeah, we actually uh, thank you for your uh, testimony, uh, Nasa, uh, Tom, for the sermon. So uh, if you got your Bibles, you can go to the book of it's a Luke 7, 36 to... What I say was 50, 50. Oh, 50 reads. 
once once a Pharisee named Simon you invited Jesus to be a guest for for a meal. Just as Jesus uh, entered the man's home and takes his place at the table, a woman from the city, you're notorious as a woman of ill, your repute uh, follows him in. She has heard that Jesus will be at the Pharisee's home. So she comes in and approaches him, carrying an, an uh, abligaster flash of a flash of of uh, per perfume oil, then she begins to cry. She kneels down so her tears fall on Jesus' feet, and she starts weeping his feet with her own hair, or wiping his feet with her own hair. And then she actually kisses his feet, and she pours the perfume oil on them. Simon is thinking, now I know this guy is a fraud. If he were a real prophet, he would have known this woman is a sinner. And he would never let her get near him. Much less touch him or kiss him. Now, so Jesus was uh, knowing this and he, uh, and he was thinking this, but he... Spoker said, Simon, yeah, I want to tell you a story. So, so, uh, uh Simon says, uh, tell me, teacher. So, Jesus, uh, tell the story in verse 41 reads that two men owned a certain, uh, lender a, a lot of money. One owed a hundred weeks wages and the other owed ten week wages. Both men, uh, default on their loans, which, which means yeah they owned it uh, on their loans, but the lender forgave them both. So he said, "Here's the question for you: uh, Which man will love the lender more?" And Simon responds, verse forty-three says, "Well, well, I guess it would be the one who has for forgiven more." And Jesus responds to say, "Good answer." So now Jesus turns around, so he's facing the woman, although he's still speaking to Simon. And he says that, do you see this woman here? He, he said, it's kind of funny. I entered your home and you didn't provide a basin of water so I could wash the road dust from my feet. So you didn't give me a... No, a, a customary kiss of greeting and welcome. So you didn't offer me the common courtesy of providing oil to brighten my face. But this woman has wet my feet with her own tears and washed them with her own hair. She hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I, I came in. And she has applied perfume oil to my feet that this woman has been given has been forgiven much and she is showing much love but the person who has shown little love shows how little forgiveness he has received and so jesus says to the woman verse 48 says that your sins are for forgiven so simon and his friends you know, it was uh talking among themselves and they said in verse 49 who, who does this God think that he is? See, he has the authority to claim, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he has the audacity to claim the authority to forgive him sins. And so Jesus speaks to the woman in verse 50 about saying, your faith has liberated you. So he said, go in peace. Yeah, uh, one of the 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 things here um, I was looking at, um, which was you no know, the woman, when the Bible said that she has an ill, um, a reproach, it was referring to that she was a a a sinful woman. In other words, she was a worker. Um, back then, 
you know, people of that status of uh could not be allowed to to be in the presence of a of a, a holy man. Um so you know the, the the story said she heard Jesus was coming to one of the Pharisees' home that he knew, which was Simon. Which is shocking because you know, I thought you know Simon was even though Simon is one of Jesus' disciples, I thought he was the one um, who believed. But uh, uh, Simon was actually a Pharisee. A Pharisee is a is a person who know the word but they don't believe it, and so. Here, Simon doesn't believe him and his friends sitting there, and they don't believe that this woman who's a sinner comes up and, and, and she's, you know, as the scripture says, she was crying at his feet and wiping his feet with her hair and then oiling his feet. In other words, greeting her, uh, uh, gr greeting him, you know, yeah, inside of their, their home or whatnot. Um, Simon Noon get get not want to say uh, upset at this or they looking at Jesus as if you know knew he couldn't be a, a prophet because a prophet wasn't isn't allowed to allow you know people from from that type of status to to even you know touch them or anything yeah unless you 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 was made whole and so or or or, or else you was cleansed. Um, but however, this woman touched him anyway, and and she was crying and uh, watching her tears with her feet. One of the things that that pointed out to me when Jesus told Simon the story about the lenders, uh, he was explaining that which one, which debt, you know, due to how much money was owed, which one, who, you, yeah, which lender would be more. Uh, happy to hear that he's been forgiven. And Simon responded right away and said, the one who owed the most money. And said, yeah. And when Jesus said the story, he was, he was trying to explain to Simon, you know, the woman, you know, who you who you and your friends was, was talking about, uh, you know, she's the one who has the most sin on her. But then again, she comes in and she's, I want to say, uh, what's the uh, serv uh, gives gives Jesus the servant to of of a uh, what welcoming him in, and so how many uh, uh, sinners do we or how many bad things that I can say that we allow Jesus to enter in, into our lives, and so where this woman had the certain reputation that she had, you know, where to, to go around and to have this type of reputation, and she still has time for Jesus. She she still comes by, and she still gives in. Uh, uh, no, the scripture didn't say she, she went out and bought these things. These, these were things that she she currently had. And so she came in and did all these things. So when Jesus was asking him, how come you didn't, you know, do these things, you know? And how come yeah, you didn't, you know, welcome me with a kiss? And and how come yeah, you didn't give me no water for me to wash my, my dusty feet? I just got finished ministering. Now I'm coming to your house and now I'm coming in here with, with dirty feet and and so the the you no know, the point of this is about, you know, Jesus being you know, the forgiver that he is. So regardless of the uh, reputation that that this that this woman had on her, you know, uh, uh, know, know the fact that she still came to him with despite the fact that her life, I want to say, was, was sinful. And so if there is any, I want to say, uh, your regrets that you're holding on towards other people with, they, this is actually what, what this is it, it is reflecting. This is reflecting that, you know, uh, yeah, you holding on to things from other people or people holding on things against you. And so all of these worries and these, these, these I want to say anxieties and, and all of that, 
that 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 we attend to, to allow to weigh us down. And so Jesus points out this woman to explain that that she's been forgiven. You know, not just for her, you know, actions, but he 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 is literally forgiven her for for everything. And so is there is there some forgiveness and the 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 personal side of Jesus is that he for, for forgives us for all of our sins. Uh, there's 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 a scripture that said that he had, he have died for our iniquity, and so he 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 died for our past, uh, our present, which is today, and for our future, which is to tomorrow. And so Jesus uh, gave his life for us to live. Uh, clean, uh, cleanse, and, and we're not cleansed by our own doing, but we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And so it, it, it is through the actions of Jesus saying to the woman that you are forgiving that immediately erases her from her even thinking about her past life. And so just how amazing that just I want to say just how that is how amazing that that is to have Jesus to forgive you. Of course, of course. For your past sins. Yeah. Uh-huh. It don't matter how, how gruesome that it is or how wrong that it is. Right. Or it, it doesn't matter if you back stepped or back pedaled right. or yeah. the the fact that Jesus said to her with his words that you're forgiven. Yes. Yes, right. And even though she knew that she was in the wrong, but the the mindset of Jesus forgiving her right. and her it, it I, I don't want to say her being at the instantly Dropping everything that she uh, uh, previously did, um, everything mentally, emotionally, physically, yeah, she let it all go like that. And just because Jesus said she's forgiven, so she erased or forgetting, forgotten about her past and looked to where she is now and looked for a better future. Is that there are some things that you've holding against maybe yourself or towards other people? Mm -hmm. Then now, now is the time to receive Jesus the forgiver. He has forgiven me for my sins. Okay. He forgiven you for yours. Yes. And Jesus wants you to forgive other people so you can start living in the present. The now and start living for your future, which is for your tomorrow. Right. So you know, I, you know, I do thank the Lord for, for telling the woman, uh, even though Lord, regardlessly of her, 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 uh, job currently, that the fact, it, it is it. It, it's an amazing thing to what to be I want to say what to be washed away right. and to be cleansed and mm -hmm. and to now to step forward with a new identity for the scripture said that we are the old man is dead but now uh, yeah we have to put on the new man mm -hmm. you know so yeah I, I yeah I do thank the Lord for for being himself the the, the forgiver of our sins, of our, you know, yeah. our life and everything. So, no, I do want you also to, what you look, uh, uh, what to not not look back yesterday, what to think right. about today and start moving forward. Um, now I'm going to read to you these sevenfold blessings. Okay. Number one, I, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. So number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, I speak 
blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that is hurting, that is lonely, that is bereaved, or that is confused. Uh, number six, I speak blessings of finances, debt cancellation, prosperity, and economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your excitement, to move forward in your purpose. Um, all right, yeah, uh, if you want to go, uh, well, we're going to do the uh, benediction speech. And uh, uh, you you can find it in, in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24, 25, and 26. Are you uh, ready? Yeah. Okay, it say, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God smile on you. May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.